A fifth thing I'd like to show you is uh, polarization and Brewster's law. I think it would help first to understand uh, a little bit more about polarization. Uh, maybe give a definition. Now it depends if you're uh, American or not, because some people write polarization with a Z, some people write it with an S, doesn't matter. But um, polarization. This is, um, the, we could say this is the plane of vibration of an electromagnetic wave, in other words, light. So I'll write that down. So it's a plane of vibration. I don't mean an airplane. I mean, uh, you know, a XY or YZ or something like that. Plane of vibration of an electromagnetic wave. In other words, light. Okay, electromagnetic, I mean light. So what happens is this. Uh, imagine you have light, and light is coming by. It's hard not to think of that stupid joke I have about a light wave, now that I'm drawing one. But I've got uh, light, and I'm going to assume it's a wave, and I'm going to say that it travels this way. Okay, it goes to the right. Now this light though, it also oscillates. Um, it goes up and down. It turns out in real life, it's actually in 3D. It's got an electric field going up and down. It's got a magnetic field going perpendicular to that. So in this case, it's hard to draw in 3D on a two-dimensional board. So let's assume this right here is the um, direction of oscillation right here. So it oscillates this way. Let's say of the electric field. Well then, if it oscillates this way, you know, let's say straight up and down, then I could say that this thing is polarized vertically. But the problem is, light that comes out uh, from the sun is not polarized. Well, it's, it's randomly polarized, we say. In other words, one photon maybe does this, another one does something weird. So when we talk about polarization, we talk about, um, imagine it's like it oscillates one way or it oscillates that way or this way and you know, as it's coming towards you. Imagine it's oscillating like you know, up and down or maybe another one's going like this, another one's like this. So they're randomly polarized. See, if something is polarized, it means you know, all of it is oscillating straight up and down, coming straight for you, always like this. Real light doesn't really do this very much. So I'll say this, that um, we will say sunlight Sunlight is unpolarized. In other words, its polarization is in random directions. But it is possible to have uh, light actually be polarized. So we'll say this. So after reflection, so if light actually bounces off something, the light is plane polarized, in other words, in a, you know, a nice, uh, you know, all up and down or left and right or something like that. Light is plane polarized, um, parallel to the surface, it turns out, if the following happens. This is actually what's known as Brewster's Law, this uh, situation here. So here I've got my surface. Here I've got some sort of index of refraction. This is a bit like what we were looking at Snell's law before. So if I've got this right here, um, let's say this is air. So that would be n equals 1. And this is some n value. Now the light coming in, let's assume that the light coming in uh, has some angle of incidence. We're going to call it phi instead. So this angle right here angle from the normal, you know, to where it's coming in. What's going to happen is, in real life, light uh, can be reflected and some is refracted. But there's a special situation, okay, if the reflected light is perpendicular to the refracted light. See this right here? So this is refracted and this is reflected. So if two things happen, okay, if number one, if the reflected light is perpendicular to refracted, maybe I'll say that right here. So if reflected, I'm going to write this symbol right here.
Hope that's okay. That means reflected is perpendicular to refracted. In other words, they are at an angle of 90 degrees to each other. And we have this uh, situation right here that n has to equal tangent of phi. So these two things, if those happen, well, it turns out this means this, but this is actually known as Brewster's Law. So what this tells you then is that if you've got that situation happening, let's say light is bouncing off, I don't know, water. Um, then if you know the index of refraction of the water, and if it like comes in at a certain angle phi, which is equal to the, well, if I take the tangent of that angle, if that equals the index of refraction of water, then the light that's reflected will be completely um, plane polarized, parallel to the surface, which means all the light coming in from the sun was, you know, lined up all sorts of weird ways, you know, up and down as it's oscillating or that way. So this way, this way, this way, whatever. After it bounces off the water, that bounced off uh, or reflected light is going to be all plane polarized. In other words, the light's only going to be going like this, oscillating left and right. In other words, parallel to the surface. So that's really good, and that actually has some really neat uses, and we'll see that um, as well. The next video, though, is going to be the last one, and I'm going to show you something about what's called Malice's Law, and that one also has to do with polarization. Okay, but Brewster's Law is known as this here happening. Okay, it says that your light is going to be plain polarized, parallel to the surface, if your reflected and refracted are at 90 degrees to each other, and if uh, this angle phi right here, uh, where we take the tangent of the angle, it's equal to n. So that's the condition. That's called Brewster's Law.